1959, Parliament passed an act which affected all dogs in New Zealand. It was the Hydatids Act, aimed at eradicating Hydatid disease. New Zealand is a farming country and agriculture forms the basis of our main industries. Our national income is earned by the large-scale export of primary products to markets overseas. New Zealand's exports and imports in value and quantity per head of population are amongst the highest in the world. So a good deal of New Zealand's economic life, as well as our reputation and reward for high quality produce, depends on the health of our sheep and cattle. And it's our responsibility as good farmers to see to the well-being of our stock animals and keep them free from disease. One of the worst is hydatid disease. Before the present campaign began, 80% of all sheep in New Zealand were affected with hydatids. The sheep population has grown to 50 million and hydatids has spread with it. Several million cattle, pigs and horses are also afflicted with hydatids. Of all the farm animals in New Zealand, it's estimated that over one half have hydatid disease. And this is the cause of every case of hydatids in New Zealand. The disease is spread only by hydatid tapeworms in somebody's dog. Worms that got into the dog because his owner allowed him to eat raw offal from sheep infected with hydatid cysts. Our children as well as our stock are in danger. Hydatid infection is easily picked up in childhood and cysts may grow undetected for years. In this country, every year, between 10 and 20 people die from hydatid disease, and more than 100 surgical operations are undergone by men, women and children for the removal of hydatid cysts. Let us see what the disease is, how it spreads, and how we can protect our children, ourselves and our stock from its ravages. These are adult hydatid worms under a microscope. The actual length of the worm is about a quarter of an inch and it consists of a head with up to four segments growing from it. In the last of these, the oldest, are hundreds of worm eggs and each egg can infect another animal with hydatid disease. Fresh segments are formed continuously by a process of budding from the neck region. On the head of the worm are many tiny hooks and suckers which enable it to burrow into a dog's intestine and hold tightly to the gut wall. Here it grows, and when the eggs in the last segment are ripe, this segment drops off into the dog's intestine. Each segment holds from 500 to 800 live, active eggs, and there may be as many as 20,000 worms in the bowel of one dog, producing countless thousands of eggs day after day. When a dog purges, these worm eggs pass to the ground and as the purge dries and disintegrates into dust, the live eggs are scattered about by wind and weather to find their way into the bodies of stock animals and humans. Most human infection comes from soiled hands. If we or our children handle animals, especially country dogs, then put our hands to our mouths the chances are that we shall infect ourselves with hydatid disease. Human infection nearly always starts in childhood, though it may be some years before the cysts are big enough to cause trouble. The invisible hydatid eggs remain alive and dangerous, sometimes for many months after they've been passed by the dog. Wherever they are carried by wind, flies or animals, they infect people and stock with the disease. So in many ways, dog purge causes widespread contamination, daily scattering hydatid eggs by the million over the paddocks and pasture, 
yards and homestead. When a farm animal or a human being swallows a hydatid egg, this is what happens. The egg passes to the upper intestine where the digestive juices dissolve the covering. The hydatid embryos are then free and they immediately attach themselves to the intestinal wall and start to burrow through it with the aid of their hooks, eventually reaching the bloodstream. The embryos are carried along by the bloodstream to the liver. Some pass again to the bloodstream and form cysts in other parts of the body, but most of them are held in the meshes of the liver and settle into its substance to form cysts. Those cysts gradually increase in size until they hold pints or even gallons of fluid. In this fluid and in the lining of the cyst, vast numbers of tiny buds are formed, each one smaller than a pinhead. Yet inside each of these buds there are 20 or more minute tapeworm heads. They have suckers and hooklets for burrowing, but so long as they are undisturbed, these worm heads remain at rest and do not develop further. They can grow into adult egg-producing tapeworms only if they get into the intestines of a dog. So if a dog owner is too careless or too lazy to feed his dog properly and allows him to eat raw offal, he turns his dog into a disease carrier. When the cyst-bearing lungs or liver of the sheep are eaten by a dog, thousands of worm heads are set free in the dog's gut. They attach themselves to the gut wall by their hooks and suckers and start to grow to maturity. Egg segments form and as they ripen, they are shed from the worm. As we saw earlier, they pass along the intestine and out with the dog's excreta to pollute the countryside and infect not only farm animals, but men, women and children as well. This is the dark story of the hydatid worm. Eggs from the dog's droppings grow in humans and stock animals, particularly sheep. If the infected offal is eaten by a dog, he develops tapeworms in his intestine, passes live hydatid eggs in his droppings, and the whole life cycle begins all over again. We can break this life cycle with very little trouble if we attack the disease at its source that is, in the dog. If we keep our dogs free from hydatid worms, we can wipe out the disease in a few years. There are only two simple things to remember. First, don't feed raw offal to your dog. Offal consists of livers, lungs, hearts, kidneys, spleens and the intestines. Second, do have your dog tested regularly. Under the 1959 Act of Parliament, dog dosing strips have to be set up by local authorities as part of the eradication campaign. Trained hydatid control officers arrange musters of all registered dogs. They give a tried and true deworming medicine, a recoline, to each dog if he's fit and dose according to size. Regular dosing has already reduced hydatids dramatically. It's no worse for him than laxative to a child, and so long as he's had a day's fast, purging makes him hydatid free, providing he eats no more raw offal. Decontamination is essential to stop infestation spreading from the strip. A sample of the purge is taken for diagnosis and specially treated before being sealed into its bottle. Any worms in this tell if the dogs eat and raw offal, a black mark against the owner.
remaining purged to a disposal pit, the hindquarters of every dog washed, and finally the owner's boots are treated. When all dogs have left the strip, two important results have been obtained. First, the owner's feeding and control can be checked with the samples, and second, all dangerous eggs have been destroyed. The strip left safe until needed again. Meanwhile, the samples are flown in special bins to Dunedin, to the National Hydatid Testing Station set up by the National Hydatid Council, which directs the entire campaign. Each sample is tested separately using a special filtering machine. If a district's tally of hydatid free dogs is really low, then there's provision for less frequent testing. If worms are in the samples, they'll show up when high pressure sprays wash the other material through the filters, leaving the worms behind. Each sample has its name tag. But all worms aren't necessarily hydatids. Close examination is needed, particularly for the false hydatid worm that causes so many losses of lamb livers. It doesn't affect humans, but since it follows the same life cycle as hydatids, it shows the dogs had raw offal, a black mark anyway. Results are forwarded to the local control officer who sent the sample in. Records for every dog registered in New Zealand are filed in this one room, up to a million a year. The control officer now knows which dogs are likely to spread hydatids, so he warns owners to take more precautions. Most people take the news as a shock. It's hard to realize the children's pet can carry a deadly disease so easily. The only answer is strict control. Out on periodic visits, control officers tackle the other, more basic problem, keeping raw offal from dogs. Farmers are realizing it's worth spending money to have hydatid free stock, so dogs are kenneled or tied up before killing starts. It's done where there's no chance of dogs getting near raw offal, both now and later, and watching out for false hydatid cysts that stick to the carcass. Facilities are important, but so is thinking ahead and controlling your dog. Cooking offal for dog's tucker needs small weights to keep it under water. When boiling it for the necessary half hour, a precaution well worth taking. Dead stock can be covered and strongly tied until it can be burnt, particularly during lambing. Incinerators are easily made for adjacent paddocks, a punctured oil drum on a tipping frame. Or carcasses can be destroyed immediately in a central closed destructor. So long as all this is done and dogs properly fed and controlled, hydatids can be eliminated entirely in this country. Let us see how New Zealand compares with the rest of the world in the incidence of hydatids. Although the disease is spreading in all sheep raising countries, it will probably come as a shock to find that New Zealand, with its high standards of public health, has been one of the areas most heavily infested. Australia, the Argentine and Uruguay are also black spots. And in these countries too, urgent practical steps are being taken to stamp out the disease. Iceland, where once hydatids afflicted 95% of the sheep and 15% of the human population, is now almost free from the disease, thanks to vigorous control measures and the cooperation of the farming community.
what iceland can do new zealand can surely do to rid our people and our stock of this killing disease for every year between ten and twenty new zealanders die of hydatid disease and hundreds undergo surgical operations it's well that we are now on the right road to ridding ourselves of this ugly disease but so long as there are dogs carrying the hydatid tapeworm there can be no let up we must break the life cycle of the hydatid parasite it needs only two simple measures on the part of every dog owner to wipe out hydatids completely First, never let your dog eat raw offal. Farmers must burn it or cook it. Second, have your dog tested regularly. Thus, the deadly tapeworm is being attacked in its two bases, as the adult tapeworm in dogs and at the cystic stage in farm stock. Constant control and proper feeding of your dog is vital. 